Hello everyone. Today we're going to discuss some problems we face with penicillin and their solutions. There are three main problems associated with penicillin. We have acid sensitivity, beta-lactamase sensitivity, and limited breadth of activity. All these problems are present in penicillin G, which is the first isolated form of a penicillin. However, later and better penicillin analog were formed by overcoming these issues, and we will see how in this video. Now let's discuss each issue on its own, starting with the acid sensitivity of penicillin. Penicillin in acidic media undergo a reaction called ring opening reaction where water come and attack the carbonyl group in the amide leading to converting the amide back into an amine and carboxylic acid thus breaking the beta-lactam ring. And since the beta-lactam ring is crucial for the antibiotic activity of penicillin, this reaction deactivates penicillin. Three main reasons are behind this phenomenon. First, ring strain. Penicillin suffer from large angle and torsional strains. As the bicyclic system, you can see in this graph here, that is made of four member drink fused to five member drink, is highly unstable and unfavorable. Thus, acid catalyzed drink opening reaction can elevate some of this strain by breaking the beta lactam ring. Secondly, the highly re reactive carbonyl group. The carbonyl group in the beta-lactam ring is highly susceptible to nucleophile attack. This is because in regular amide structure, the pair of the electrons on the nitrogen are distributed to form a resonance structure as seen. That stabilized the carbonyl group by making the carbonyl carbon less electron deficient. However, this is not the case with amide in penicillin because resonance formation in beta-lactam is impossible as it adds more strain to the already strained system. Thus, electrons on the nitrogen are localized and the carbonyl carbon is highly electron deficient and can be attacked by nucleophile leading to ring opening. Lastly, the participation of the neighboring group. The neighboring acyl group can actively participate in a mechanism to open up the beta-lactam ring. It is a kind of self-destruct mechanism where the oxygen and its free pair of electrons will act as a nucleophile and attack the carbonyl carbon, leading to breakage of the beta-lactam ring. Then, what is the solution to this problem? The beta-lactam ring is vital for the activity of penicillin and therefore nothing can be done to the first two factors. Luckily, we can play around with factor number three. The aim is to reduce the amount of neighboring group participation that take place by introducing an electron with the drawing group on the R that could draw electrons from the 
carbonyl oxygen and reduce its tendency to act as a nucleophile. This explains why penicillin G can't be given orally while penicillin V can be. The structure of these two drugs are shown here. You can see in penicillin V, it has the electron withdrawing group in the R that could draw electrons from the oxygen, thus preventing it from attacking the carbonyl in the beta lactam. While penicillin G has no electron withdrawing group, thus the oxygen can still act as a nucleophile. Because of this, the penicillin V has better acid stability than penicillin G, and it is stable enough to survive in stomach acid. Moving on to the beta lactamase sensitivity. Beta lactamase is an enzyme which inactivates penicillin through a similar pathway seen in the acid condition, so through a ring opening reaction. You can see here, it attacks the beta lactam ring leading to opening of the ring and thus inactivating the penicillin. Steric shield could block penicillin from accessing beta lactamase active site by placing a bulky group on the side chain. However, we don't want the steric shield to be very bulky that might hinder the penicillin activity. An ideal shield must be large enough to escape the beta lactamase, but sufficiently small to allow penicillin to bind to its target and function properly. Lastly, we're going to talk about narrow spectrum of activity. Penicillin, and especially the old generation, have narrow spectrum, meaning they are not very effective against particularly gram-negative bacteria. This can be due to several factors, including gram-negative bacteria, as shown here, has an outer layer that is lipid polysaccharide, which is impermeable to polar drugs such as penicillin. Thus, the LPS prevent penicillin from reaching its site of action, which is the cell wall. On the other hand, gram-positive has no LBS, which means that penicillin will be able to directly reach the cell wall. Also, gram-negative bacteria has high amount of transamidase, which is the target enzyme for penicillin. This high amount of the enzyme can be overwhelming to the drug because all of it need to be blocked by the beta-lactam antibiotic in order to show an effect. And this is particularly seen more in gram-negative than gram-positive. Third reason is the presence of the beta-lactamase enzyme that we just talked about. In the periplasmic layer, this enzyme is highly present in gram-negative bacteria compared to gram-positive, and that explains why gram-negative is more resistant to penicillin and other beta-lactam antibiotic compared to gram-positive. Finally, we have an efflux system, which is found on the outer layer of gram-negative bacteria. It's a protein that block penicillin from entering. So it pump it outside the cell and thus it can't reach the cell wall. However, gram positive has no efflux system, making the penetration of penicillin much easier. A solution has been found to this problem. 
and now there are antibiotics that have moderate to broad spectrum. Broad spectrum antibiotics are classified into two main classes. Class number one, they have NH2 on the alpha carbon in the acyl side chain. So let's have the acyl side chain back. We said there is an NH and then we have the carbonyl group and then another carbon and viridar. This is the alpha carbon that is directly attached to the carbonyl group. Class 1, all of them, they share NH2 in their structure. While class 2, they have a carboxylic acid on the alpha carbon. These two classes differ in their characteristic, including their beta-lactamase resistance and acid sensitivity. But what is common that they both are effective against some gram-negative bacteria and not restricted to gram-positive only. This leads us to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching.